Before getting into our final couple of definitions, I want to take a look at a fairly simple idea that's going to come up regularly throughout the course. It's pretty simple. If I say something like a cubed in regards to a group, it means pretty much what you would expect. Whatever my group operation, I do it three times. So a cubed, a times a times a, just like in normal algebra. Also just like in normal algebra, if I take any element to the zero power, we know that with numbers, any, power to the, any number to the zero power is one. For a group, anything to the zero power is going to be the identity. Finally, if I have a negative power, that's going to be the same thing as the inverse to that positive power. So it's going to be a inverse, a inverse, a inverse, a inverse. Now understanding that about that power notation, I'm going to define something else, which is this. What this is, it's the set of all a to the n such that n is an integer. So it can be positives, zeros, negatives, all those things. Any integer power of an element. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of that. So first of all, let's consider the group G, which is the set 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, under addition mod 6. So let's look at this weird notation 2. Well, it's going to have to have 2 to the first power. It's going to have to have 2. 2 to the second power is actually 2 plus 2. Gives us a 4. 2 to the third power, 2 plus 2 plus 2, is 6, which mod 6 gives us a 0. And then if I keep going to higher positive powers, I'm just going to start repeating through those same elements. 2 to the fourth, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 8, which mod 6 is back to 2. 2 to the 0 power is 0. I've already got that thing in there because 0 is the identity. What about negative powers? 2 to the negative first is the same thing as the inverse of 2, which is 4, because 2 plus 4 gives us 0. You can verify a few more if you want, but it turns out that those three elements are the only things that can be generated no matter what integer power of 2 you talk about. What if I try to do the same thing for generating it with 3? It's got to have 3. 3 squared, 3 plus 3 is 6. That gives me a 0. And again, no matter what else you do, you're always going to get either a 3 or a 0. One more, what about 5? Has to have 5. 5 plus 5 is 10, mod 6 is 4. 5 to the third, 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15, mod 6 is 3. 5 to the fourth is 20, mod 6 is 2. 5 to the fifth is 25, mod 6 is 1. 5 to the 6th is 30, mod 6 is 0. And at that point, we actually have everything in the groups. So there's no way that I can get anything else in there. Let's try a slightly more complicated example. Let's look at the positive rational numbers under multiplication. I don't think we've gone through that this is a group exactly, but if you check it, it certainly is. It's closed, 
it's associative, it has an identity, one, it has inverses, reciprocals, so we're good. So let's look at the two here. So let's see. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the fourth is 16. 32 on like that. If I do negatives, the reciprocal of 2, or the inverse of 2, I get a 1 half. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 3 is 1 eighth. And so on like that. Unlike in this set here, we actually get an infinite number of things. It's just we're never going to repeat an element. We're always going to get something different for each power of 2. Now, I've been avoiding giving this notation a name, partly because I didn't want to bias our experiments of looking through things. It turns out that no matter what group you have, when you do this thing, you're always going to get a subgroup. The proof's in the book. It goes back to those subgroup tests we were looking at. I'm not going to go through that. But I will use that to actually give a name for this that the book doesn't really mention. This thing here, this two bracket thing, is called the cyclic subgroup generated by two. We just said it was a subgroup. 2 is the thing that's creating it. So the only other word in here is cyclic. And we're going to get to that later. We'll talk about exactly what a cyclic group is at a later time.